This section of our energy storage and harvesting presentation focuses on lighting. In particular, we're going to discuss light-emitting diodes. So what is a light-emitting diode? The heart of a light-emitting diode consists of a chip of a semiconducting material doped with impurities to create what's called a PN junction. So as you can see here on the schematic, current flows easily from the P side, or the anode, to the N side, or the cathode, but not in the reverse direction. So these P and N um, charge carriers, which we more commonly call electrons and holes, so N being electrons and P being holes, flow into the junction from electrodes with different voltages. When these carriers meet at the active region of this semiconductor device, energy in the form of a photon is released. The wavelength of the light emitted and its color depends on the band gap energy of the materials forming the PN junction. So for example, materials used for a light emitting diode have a band gap that correspond with energies in the near infrared, the visible or near ultraviolet light, such as gallium arsenide or gallium nitride. So although the device contains the semiconducting chip, there are also other materials that are used to create the entire LED, and we're excited about these devices because they, in general, can reduce our electricity use and lessen greenhouse gas emissions. What's more, they're really efficient devices, so an average light-emitting diode light bulb, for example, lasts up to 25,000 hours and uses just 75% or uses 75% less energy compared with fluorescent bulbs. This chart here shows the spectrum of visible light from 350 nanometers to 800 nanometers. During the last 50 years, we've moved from red light-emitting diodes that were first developed in 1962 by General Electric all the way through to blue lights in the 1990s. So these have been used for things like traffic lights, uh, blue LEDs, are also useful for a lot your your keychain lights that you've seen and now in the in the last 15 years or so um, we've moved into using light emitting diodes to replace office and home lighting so white light emitting diodes um, these are first used to replace incandescent lights which were highly inefficient and now um, white lights white light emitting diodes are even used to replace uh, fluorescent lights. So this is, you know, getting to the point now where light emitting diodes are really the most efficient forms of light bulbs that we can use. Okay, so we can use light emitting diodes for a variety of applications, uh, ones that you already have seen around you for quite some time, like traffic lights. We'd mentioned earlier that the, the red, yellow, and green lights are used to replace traditional light sources. These reduce the energy usage and have a considerably longer operating life. They're also used in, in new technologies in the recent years, for example, for car headlights, as you see here with this Audi. Um, these materials are, are generally inorganic semiconductor materials, which we'll discuss a little bit later, but the most uh, recent forms of light-emitting diodes can be made out of, of polymer-based materials as well, and we'll discuss this in a few slides. So why are we interested in light-emitting diodes? The three traditional light sources that we've used for, for the majority of, of, our, of our century, incandescent, fluorescent, and high-intensity discharge lights, have evolved to their present performance levels during the last 70 years, and they're really not going to improve very much, as you see on this, on this graph here showing efficiency as, as a function of time here since 1940. Um, it's really, you know, incandescent hasn't changed at all. Fluorescents have gotten a little bit better, but really aren't going to get much better. But white light-emitting diodes and white organic light-emitting diodes, which we'll talk about a little bit later, have really shown a lot of promise in terms of cost and efficiency. So um, light-emitting diode and organic light-emitting diode research is currently going on and, and shows that we can actually improve this efficiency and cost through efforts of, of major manufacturers, which will help get these kinds of materials further into the market for solid state lighting. 
In fact, efficiency of commercial warm and cool white light emitting diodes are expected to reach 266 lumens per watt by 2020, making light emitting diodes the most promising lighting technology, according to the United States Department of Energy. Okay, so what makes light emitting diodes so attractive? On the slide here, you see the periodic table of elements that lists the types of three, group three and group five semiconductor materials, such as gallium nitride or gallium arsenide, that are typically used to grow light emitting diode materials. The figure on the right shows a material's band gap plotted against lattice constant for a variety of compound semiconductors. The multicolored bands here correspond to the visible wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum. So here, red corresponds to 700 nanometers, and this kind of purplish blue is closer to 400 nanometers. So a white light emitting diode, for example, is created by using a blue or ultraviolet, which is on this higher energy end of the, the blue visible end, um, using one of these LEDs and coating the plastic cover with a white phosphor, which actually spreads out the near monochromatic high energy from the semiconductor light down to lots of lower energy wavelengths, which then appear white. This is the same way a fluorescent light bulb works with respect to using a phosphor. In fact, if you take away the phosphor, the fluorescent light becomes a black light, and the white LED becomes just an ultraviolet LED. The development of light emitting diode technology has caused their efficiency and light output to rise exponentially, with a doubling occurring about every 36 months since the 1960s, um, something that you might recognize in, in a similar fashion to Moore's Law. So along with the inorganic materials we just discussed, there are also another class or family of materials that are actively being researched in this area, and this is, this is a group of materials called organic light emitting diodes. And what we mean by organic in this case are materials that are based on polymers or plastics, and these are especially appealing because they are very cheap to produce. You can basically spin coat these films or, or you know, dip coat or grow them in solution to create these layers of, of um, polymer materials, thin films of polymers, that are just like in the inorganic case. They have a cathode and an anode and a conductive layer. But what's interesting about these kinds of materials is that A, they can be produced very cheaply, and B, they're flexible. So you can imagine now having something that, unlike your uh, traffic light, which is very rigid, you can now bend it and flex it and use it for a series of interesting applications. So what kinds of examples could we could we use this for? Or can you imagine this for? Well, one really neat one that you can probably think of right away is for displays. So um, there are already companies such as Sony and Toshiba that are using organic light emitting diodes as displays in televisions, in, in handheld devices, and then also um, for robotics and medical devices. A really cutting edge new technique um, are these grids con consisting of tiny um, organic light emitting diodes that are stretchable. So this is a neat concept for something like an electronic skin that in this case is made of a coated carbon nanotube in a liquid polymer matrix. So there's a lot of neat research that's going on in this field and continues to go on and will be in the future. Okay, so what are the challenges and, and advantages of using these materials for light emitting diodes? Well, the neat thing about all these materials, whether they're organic or inorganic, is their considerable efficiency when com compared to traditional lighting sources. Um, what's more is the size. You can have, you know, unlike your usual incandescent light bulb with a filament and glass, these are really small devices and can be turned on and off very quickly. You don't have to wait for, you know, a filament to warm up and a gas to form and all of these things. You can cycle these things very fast. They have a very good lifetime. Um, any of you who have a bicycle with a LED flashlight on it know that, you know, if something happens to it, it falls, it drops, it's still, you know, very shock resistant. And, it, you know, the focus of it is excellent as well. 
what's um, becoming a, a real challenge is, is something called droop. So this is on our list of challenges here with um, you know, the materials and manufacturing price, which is an issue more for inorganic materials, um, the tunability of color. So that's another issue where a material that emits in the white region um, can't quite have that warm yellow component to the white light that a, a traditional light bulb would have. It's really more of a cool bluish light. And for our home and office lighting, our eyes are better suited and, and prefer that warmer yellow light. So how do we achieve that? Um, but the key challenge here is this droop I had just mentioned. So um, light emitting diodes really perform at their best using low power, the, the few milliamps that it takes to backlight the little screen on your iPhone, for example. But at the current power levels that we need for general lighting, so in our home or offices, this droop concept kicks in where the efficiency drops dramatically. And so that sort of you know negates the benefits that we were hoping for out of these materials. So researchers are actively studying this today. Um, but this makes light-emitting diodes an interesting area of research um, for now and for the future.